Before lunch, we were discussing the GUI, and we said that so far all our demonstrations of buttons and grids and panels are good, but we don't really have the button react in any way to a press. And so what we're going to talk about now is how can we get a button to do something after it's been pressed? And that is the first lesson after lunch today. Let's look at some code. And here I've got my usual set of inputs. And here I'm going to do something called an action listener demo. And we're not only going to react to a button press, but when we have multiple buttons, we need to figure out which button has been pressed. So I've created this little class called action listener demo one class. And you'll notice that this is our, the first time in the class that we're actually using our new knowledge about interfaces. And here, instead of extending action listener, I'm implementing action listener. So action listener is not a class, it's an interface. And it's like joining a club. So in order to implement action listener, it's, I'm joining the action listener club. So the club has rules, you gotta pay some dues. And what you need to do if you're gonna join the action listener club is you need to create this method called action performed. And action performed, the, the header for that method is predefined by the interface. And so you have to build it exactly like they say. Yet override is optional, but good to help you figure out if you've gotten the header right. You can see that the action performed doesn't return anything, but it takes this action event as a parameter. And this action event is passed to you once the button is pressed and this method is called, this event is passed to you and it contains information about what happened. In this case, it's a button press. Which button got pressed? All that information is gonna be contained in this variable. And you can see in this code, all we're doing is we're checking this get source method on this event and trying to figure out, did button one get pressed? If it did, we'll say that button one got pressed. And if it wasn't button one, we know it had to be button two because in our demo, we only have two buttons. So basically they either press the first one or the second one, that's all that could possibly happen. So that is the method that we're going to have that is going to react to the button being pressed. Now let's look at the code to set this all up. I've created my two buttons. In this case, I've used instance variables. So I'm starting to make it look more like the Java that we've written before, right? We have the instance variables up here, and this is the constructor down here. And so we declare the buttons up here. When you build your Wordle game, you should build it like this properly, instead of just throwing everything into a main method. So you wanna declare your variables. So here I've got two buttons and a frame. I've called the buttons button one and button two. I've got my familiar grid layout. I've added the buttons to the frame. I don't have any panels here, but you could have panels if you wanted. And now we're gonna get to the core here of our lesson which is this thing right here. So what I'm doing is I'm adding an action listener to the button. So here is the action listener method I'm calling on each button. I'm calling it on button one and button two. And what goes in here is the name of the object that's going to react when the button is pressed. Okay, so I wanna tell the button when you get pressed, here is the object that's going to uh, handle your response. What do you think it means when I put the keyword this in here? What does the keyword this mean in Java? Ms. Aryan, what does the keyword this mean? We looked at other uses for the keyword this. What does it mean? Okay, in this case, the object that the button belongs to, which is the object of this class, that's the same object that's going to handle the button. In other words, this object right here, which is creating the button, is also going to handle the button. So here, the keyword this means I or my or myself. That means I'm going to handle the button press myself. That's what it's trying to say. So that's what the keyword this means here. So now, this is important because if you don't tell the button who handles the press, it's not going to react. Once again, we're going to set the size of our window and we're going to show the window. So let's run this now. And now you can see I've got my two buttons here. And this time, when I press one of the buttons, you can see it says that I've pressed the button. So I'm using the message dialogs to confirm 
which button was pressed. When you build your Wordle game, you should put your buttons, your frames, and your panels as attributes, and then fill them up in the constructor, and then have other pieces 